Good morning. Today is um, Tuesday, August the 16th. It is 9.20 in the morning. We're going to start off with the sound saying coming from Psalm 51.10. It says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart, and renew a right spirit within me. The back is coming from Akai 7, 8, and it says, When I fall, I shall arise. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. Okay, we're going to... open up today with Psalms 144 and then we'll try to get to our reading which is Luke 15 Luke 15 is not that long it's only 31 verses and 144 is 15 verses, so let's begin. And this is a psalm of King David. Praise be to the Lord my rock, who trains my hands for war, my fingers for battle. He is my loving God and my fortress, my stronghold and my deliverer, my shield in whom I take refuge, who subdues people under me. Amen. O oh Lord, what is man that you care for him, the son of man that you think of him? Man is like a breath. His days are like a fleeting shadow, and it truly is. One minute, you're 16. Blink your eyes twice, you're 30. Blink it three times, you're 50. Time just flies by. And that's what this is saying. Man's time is like a fleeting shadow. Okay? Man is like a breath. His days are like a fleeting shadow. Parts of heaven, O oh Lord, and come down. Touch the mountain so that they smoke. Part your heaven, O oh Lord, and come down. Touch the mountain so that they smoke. Send forth lightning and scatter the enemy. Shoot your arrows and root them out. Reach down your hand from on high. Deliver me and rescue me from the mighty waters, from the hands of foreigners, whose mouths are full of lies, whose right hand are deceptive. I will sing a new song to you, O Lord. On the tenth string lyrics, I will make music to you, to the one who gives victory to kings. To deliver his servant David from the deadly sword. Deliver me and rescue me from the hands of foreigners whose mouths are full of lies, whose right hands are deceptive. Then our sons in their youth will be well nurtured plants. Then our sons in their youth will be well nurtured plants. And our daughters will be like pillars curved to adore a palace. Our barns will be filled. With every kind of provision, our sheep will increase by thousands, by tens of thousands in our field. Our oxen will draw heavy loads. There will no breaching of walls, no going into captivity, no cry of distress in our streets. Blessed are the people of whom there is truth. Blessed are the people who God is the Lord. So it truly is a blessing to know God. Okay, so let's go to our reading. It is talking about the parable of the lost sheep. It also speaks about the lost son. And that is what our Lord is discussing in this particular chapter. Let's begin. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathered around to hear him. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law murmured. 
This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Of course. Of course. Are we not all sinners? The Pharisees thought they were special for whatever reason. We're all sinners. All of us. Okay? It doesn't matter who you think highly of. They are still sinners. All right? There isn't a soul on earth that is greater than Christ. Period. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law murmured, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you had a hundred sheep and lost one of them. Does he not leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? Of course. Why do you go after the lost sheep? Because that's the one who's wandered away. Why do you leave the 99 behind? Because they're the ones who are going to sit put. They're not going anywhere. Okay? It doesn't matter whether you have one or two lost sheep or 98 left. You're supposed to go after that lost sheep. Okay. In the same way, when you lose a piece of jewelry, you may have a jewelry box full of other precious gifts. But if you lose this one little special gift, Maybe your grandmother gave it to you. Maybe it's an anniversary ring of some kind, something special to you. Do you not leave the jewelry box and search all over your home for that lost piece? Well, that's how people are. People are more precious than a piece of jewelry. Okay. And a piece of jewelry it, it breathes not. It's, 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 it's precious in one way, but not as precious as a human life. Okay? It didn't say if a person lost a piece of jewelry, he goes out and look for it. It says if a sheep is lost. So that tells you that people are more important than possessions. Let's keep moving. Does he not leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulder and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me. I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner. One when one person repents and turns his life around, all of heaven rejoices over one. All right? I tell you that the same way there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who do not need to repent. The parable of the lost coin. I suppose a woman had ten silver coins and lost one. Does she not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost coin. In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Again, two different examples. One using the sheep, one using the coin. Either way, both stories refer to humans, to man's repentance, not to finding a simple coin. Okay? The parable of the Lord, and, and today, we have... It's like the other way around. 
Now there are no longer 99 righteous sheep. That number has dwindled down to about 9 righteous sheep and 91 lost. This is why our world is upside down. This is why we are adapting to that which is abominable in the sight of God. Because in the earth, there are more lost than there are righteous. And the Bible tells us that it is a terrible thing indeed. It's a terrible thing indeed to forget God. And we can see the results of this. Look at your world and look at what has happened within the last 60 years. Look what goes on every day. Madness. The parable of the lost son. Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together. All he had set off for a distant country and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in the whole country and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his field to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the paws that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, yeah, we do come to our senses after a while. Poverty will do that to you. Struggle will do the same. It brings you to your senses. It makes you ponder. It should motivate you to do something. This is what happened with this young man. He took his money, he squandered it as he pleased. Then he fell into poverty. His poverty was so severe that he was actually eating with the pigs. That would do the same to any one of us. Any one of us at any given time. You hear stories about people losing this and suffering through this disease and all kinds of bad things going on in their lives. Please never think that those things cannot come near thee. Never think that you are an exception to the rule of life. We are all tested eventually. All of us. And when the test is done, if you can still say the Lord is my God, you have passed the test. But the test can be rough, grievous, emotionally and spiritually draining. But if you believe in God, you know that Everything happens for a purpose. Everything. So please, count your blessings. And thank God every day. And forget not to pray for others. Hmm? Let's continue. He longed to fill his stomach with the paws that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired men have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against him, heaven, and against you. Do you notice that he put God first? When he says, I have sinned against heaven. That means a man had truly come to his senses. For, for, 
For God is greater than his father. God is greater than any family member you have. He is your greatest companion. You can trust in him all the time. Any other relationship you have will be conditional. Even relationship with biological parents can be conditional. Biological siblings can be conditional. With your spouses, all conditional. Friends, conditional. But with God, it's genuine. Genuine love. A love that can be depended on. Trusted. Reliable. He will always hear you out. Always. I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired men. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long ways off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He came back broke, <laughs> broke. But that wasn't what mattered to his father. What mattered to his father is that he returned with a different attitude. When he left, he had a different attitude. When he came back, he was mature. What took him there? Not during the time he had plenty. It was when he hit rock bottom. When he came to his senses. That'll do it to all of us. Hitting rock bottom would do two things to you. It would either make you stronger or it would break you. It will make you stronger or break you. It'll make you better or bitter. Let it be that you become better or stronger. Hmm? Let's continue. But while he was still a long ways off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said to, to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. And you know, these words were not spoken to his father while he stood. He, he kneeled and spoke these words to his father. This is a long time ago when we had so much respect for our elders. When, at, at, at the time when our elders could speak to us and tell us anything, counsel us, and we would receive it. Those days are long gone. Long gone. What a shame. He did this on his knees. Because that's how you address your parents. And that was a sign of great respect and sorrow. The son said to his father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servant, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. He was barefooted. Needed clothes. He was dirty. Bring the fattest calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So when he was spending, squandering, he was dead. Poverty breathed life into the man. It, it, it gave him a, a sense of right and wrong. It gave him a sense of gratitude. 
He was more concerned about how he offended God and how he offended his father more so than how he squandered money. If only we would think this way today. Though the world is trying to turn things around, when you allow evil to fester upon the earth, making that turn will always be a painful process. You will always meet it with great resistance. Is it worth moving on? Yes. Why? For the sake of our children. That's why. For the sake of all the children we're killing. That's why. It is our responsibility as parents and grandparents and leaders of this country to leave a healthy world for our children. Not a swamp. So they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked them what was going on. Your brother has come, they replied, and your father has killed the fattest calf because he has, he has him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. Now, now, now you know, brothers and sisters, jealousy is a monster all. He's a monster. Why be jealous for anything or anyone? If your parents are rejoicing, you should rejoice with them. If your friends are rejoicing, if they're rejoicing over that which is good, you should rejoice with them. You're never to be jealous over nothing or anyone at all. This is jealousy. Okay? Let's see how some jealousy sounds. The other brother became angry and refused to go. So his father came out and pleaded with him. But his he answered his father, look. All these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your order. Okay? That's good to serve your parents. Okay? Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friend. But when this son of yours who has squandered your property with prostitutes comes home, you killed the fattest calf for him. Listen to response and listen to it carefully. My son, the father said, you are always with me. And everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because your brother, because this brother of yours is was dead and is alive again. Okay? He was lost and is found. So what his father was saying to him is that you've never been there. You never got lost. We could have found him, but we could have found him dead. As you do today. But when you see your loved one return back home, with a brand new attitude that is certainly worth a celebration. It is always much better to celebrate the return of a child, a son or daughter, a family member, than to celebrate their passing. Point blank period. Thank you very much for joining us here at Spiritual Word. My name is Brenda Guerrero, and as always, brothers and sisters, I say the same thing. May the peace of God be upon you. May the protection of God surround you and all those you love. And may the will of God, not your will, be manifested. I love you. Have a beautiful day. And don't forget, 
try to show love to everyone. Not to those that are really easy for you to love. Try showing it to the ones that are difficult to love. That's how you please God. And to strangers. Have a beautiful day. And talk to you later.